On today's The Doctor Is In, we are talking about pain management. When you have pain that doesn't quit, it can change your focus on life, but it doesn't have to be a deal breaker. Dr. Scott Ackerman, one of the first Coast's leading doctors, is joining us today to talk about ways to reduce pain, and he has brought with him a guest. Dr. Ackerman, thanks again for being here. We appreciate you every Friday. Thank you, Casey. Inter introduce us to, to your friend. It's Who'd good you seeing you. Thank you for having us today. Yes. So I have uh, my friend. This is Michelle <laughs> Fay. She's, a, she's a, my nurse. So she's a nurse that works uh, with me in my office. Uh, and um, not only is she a nurse, but she's special in that she's an oncology certified nurse with extra certification in palliative care. And palliative care is uh, the, that, that field of knowledge that we, uh, that we deal with patients that have pain or discomfort and we're trying to en enhance their quality of life. So she really is an expert on working with patients uh, on managing their pain and she does it every day. It's part of her daily life. And bless your heart for that. And listen, we were talking about at the top of the show, 100 million Americans affected with some sort of pain. That's incredible. What are the different types of pain? Well, first of all, pain is a feeling that's usually associated with, t with tissue damage. And there's two kinds of pain. The first is acute pain. And acute pain is our body's way of, uh, of protecting us. So acute pain might be when you step on a nail, you feel that sharp pain in your foot. When you touch a hot stove, you feel a sharp yeah, pain in your hand. instantaneous pain. Exactly, instantaneous, and it makes you react very quickly and move away from that so there's no permanent damage. The other kind of pain is a chronic pain, and this chronic pain is the kind of pain that persists for months or weeks or years, and it could be a broken bone. You could have a, a, a fractured bone, a fractured rib, and that pain can last for a long period of time because it takes time to heal. Or arthritis, and we see this a, lo a lot with people with uh, back pain. That's really degenerative pain in their spine because they have uh, the bones have degenerated a bit in the spine, and they have this pain uh, for many, many years. And this kind of pain, this chronic pain, is a type of pain that really impacts people in all aspects of their life. It really has a multi-dimensional effect on patients. And this is, uh, this kind of pain is one of the most common reasons for patients to go to the emergency room. So, Michelle, let's bring you into the conversation and talk a little bit about the difference between the various medications that are prescribed for pain. Sure. Pharmacological interventions are the first line in treating unrelieved pain. You have over-the-counter medications such as aspirin, ibuprofen, Tylenol that are effective for mild pain. And then you have your medications that are stronger that are prescribed by your doctor, such as opioids, uh, Lortab, um, Oxycodone. And all medications should be taken under the direction of your doctor because they need to be closely monitored for effectiveness and safety. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, you hear of those stories with those uh, medications that are prescribed, the oxycodone. You hear stories of people becoming addicted to those. You have to be so conscientious and careful. Dr. Ackerman, are there any alternatives to taking pain medications, whether they be over-the-counter or prescribed? Well, you're right. These opioids can be a problem because they're so addictive and they're so difficult to get off of when you're on them for a long period of time. So there are some non-pharmacological therapies that are effective and can be used to help patients like this that have, uh, that have an addiction because they've been on pain medication for a long time. Um, and some of our patients that have cancer, um, we try some other therapies too to help them not need so much uh, pain medication. Uh, one thing that I tell a lot of patients to try is some exercise. No matter how severe the pain is, if it's not, if it's very severe cancer pain, exercise is, is not really feasible. But for a more mild pain that's kind of chronic, any kind of exercise is, is good. Exercise will help relieve pain because when you exercise, you release endorphins in your body, which is the body's natural painkiller. And other things that you may think are a little bit fringe, like massage and biofeedback and music therapy, these things really do have some effect on pain. And it may not completely eliminate the need for stronger pain medication, but it may make it so you need less of these stronger pain medications and help me kind of get over over the hump a little bit. Yeah, that's incredible. Something as simple, and we were just talking to Louie a second about it, getting off the sofa and exercising. Right. I mean, what a difference that that can make. Uh, Michelle, you, give us some tips. If someone is experiencing pain and they want to talk to their physician about it, give them some tips on specifically what they should be addressing so that they're helped effectively. So being prepared is very important when you're meeting with your doctor to maximize your time. And an easy way for a patient to do that is to keep a journal of your pain. 
Um, write down when you're having pain. Um, describe it. You could use the, the common number scale, zero to 10, and write down when you're taking medication, how much, how often. That's a tool that your uh, doctor can use to help come up with a treatment plan that's going to work for you, and it can be used for monitoring effectiveness and safety. Um, and then it's important to be comfortable with talking to your doctor. I think it's hard for a lot of people to talk about their pain or admit they're in pain. So it's important to develop that trusting relationship with your health care provider um, to, to come up with a plan that's going to work for you. Yeah, and we've talked about that before, Dr. Ackerman, having patients really not be afraid to be open. Uh, with right. their doctor because otherwise how can you help them if they're not being honest with you? And being prepared, what Michelle was saying with keeping a journal how much pain medication you're taking, how often you're taking it, it allows us to assess that and maybe try to find one solution that'll get you through the whole day. All right, great teamwork. Thank you guys so much Thank for you. being here. Dr. Ackerman, we appreciate it. Michelle for joining Thank us as me. well. Thank you so much and for all of the good advice that you bring on each and every week. For questions regarding today's topic or any other health questions that you might have, you can connect with Dr. Ackerman on Facebook by visiting facebook.com First Coast Oncology. Ask whatever you'd like and they will get back with you.